normal setup position, grip end down, not club, just a couple um, inches out of the front. So I'm kind of making my backswing, not kind of, I am, making my backswing from here, on the way back, just neutral. I'm still feeling like I have that little band in on the way back here. As I begin working down, I get the butt of the club to the curb, kind of back edge of my right foot, feeling the um, butt of the club against the curb, kind of all the way through impact as my body's turning, and then it's gonna naturally come off on the way through, right? That's right, yeah. And so when I'm doing this, and I set up up here, what I'm feeling, obviously you're gonna feel some things just to get this to the curb, and then the force against this, but especially in the follow through, I'm not going down the curb forever. That's right. Right? So it's, it's, it comes off and up to the left as I work my body pieces That's through. That's right. Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to master the 50 yard wedge shot. We're gonna give you two simple drills to practice. Now, before we dive in, a couple quick things. Number one, we have launched our two-day golf schools in Bethlehem, PA this summer. I would love to have you come work on your golf game. If you wanna come up to Bethlehem, please do. We'll include a link in the description down below to check that out. If you can't make it for a golf school, I would still love to work with you through kagornogolf.com. Now, we designed kagornogolf.com really to remove the barrier between you and I, so I can be your personal golf coach. You can send me your swing, be part of our community, get access to everything we have, including all the master classes, the member library, the practice section, everything you need to take your game to the next level. That's at kagornogolf.com. We'll put a link in the description down below. Now, as you can see, as in a part of our travel here, we're not still back at Bethlehem. We are in Las Vegas. We're at TPC Las Vegas, and we're going to be with uh, Matt Henderson today to talk wedges. He's the director of instruction here at TPC Las Vegas, the chapter uh, section teacher of the year, Golf Digest Best Young Teachers, and ranked as one of the top teachers in the state of Nevada. He's going to help us. We're going to dive right into the drills, so let's get started. All right, Matt, thanks for having us out here, man. Hey, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. So let's dive right in uh, to the drills. Two drills that we want to talk about in this video on how to master the 50 yard wedge shot. And I know the first one, because I cheated and we saw a little earlier, has a little exercise band included with it. That's right. Um, so why don't we flip spots, Matt, and if you could show us how this first drill works and how the exercise band works, let's, uh, let's take a look at it. All right, so kind of common exercise band. Uh, yeah. We loop it around our necks. Don't you find, you know, any uh, any gym now? They're pretty common. Uh, yeah, basement, garage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hanging around. Yeah, yeah. Loop it around the neck. Uh, cool. And what we'll do is we'll affix our lead hand grip, right? And you just kind of tuck it, just a little corner of it right under the lead hand. And then okay. same thing with the trail hand, right? Just kind of leaps right in there. And and there's, it's, it's pretty tight. Like my, I have some bend in my arm. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work to kind of assume our our golf posture, and so that there's that tension ensuing on there. I really like this drill to start to get some general swing shape with people, right? Yeah. So now I'm in golf posture, and as I make this this little motion, there's still some tension in here. So that trail arm has just a a little bit of tension Ooh, applying like into that. there. Nothing to where it's like super drastic and we're strangling ourselves, right? But a little bit of tension, and then same thing when we make the the through motion. Love right? that. Yep. So tension on both sides and I love drill. it. And let me let me hop in there, man, and try that myself here. And I like the basic structure to start with. One of the videos we did recently with uh, Milo around Arizona had a had a kind of foundational system like this too, where if you do one or two big picture things correct, um, it, you can get a lot of the other stuff kind of for free, right? When you when you wrap this around and feel the tension and get the movement as I'm starting to work back, it can handle a lot of, hey, what am I supposed to feel with my arms and hands? What am I supposed to feel with my body? Kind of all in one drill, right? That's right. So I have the tension, and definitely I feel tension at the setup. I mean, I feel it more than I would have thought, kind of right in the beginning. And then when I'm going back, I'm just feeling like I'm maintaining. Obviously, if I were to get more narrow, that tension goes away, but I'm not going, like you said, super uh, crazy with it. Just a little, maintain the tension you start with, is that fair? That's it. And then when you're doing this, Matt, am I doing a couple um, kind of both sides, maybe brushing the grass to get started. Absolutely. If we can yeah. get that, that club, just, just brushing that grass, that arc, maintaining that, that's the learning piece. Yeah. And this would be a great, you know, I think if you and I had someone in here who um, we never saw before building a wedge foundation, this would be a beautiful uh, part number one. 
And we'll talk about the setup a little bit later, a couple of bullet points that are important for the 50 yard wedge shot. But this in terms of setup, arm structure, body motion, from the setup through the backswing and beginning downswing is awesome. But we have another uh, really cool drill that we gotta move a little bit for uh, to talk a little bit more about the downswing follow through. All right, Matt, so drill number two here, we're on the side of the range, we have a curb. What the heck's going on over here? What are we doing? All right, so we're sitting here on this curb. We flip our club upside down so we don't sharpen it up, Okay. <laughs> all right? And essentially, we're just making a golf swing. Uh, but what goes on with this is as we start putting force into the curb, there starts being some natural kind of motion as to how our bodies really want to flow yeah. through the, the hitting area right in here. And this is where it comes into the actual learning piece of the drill, right? How our hands are elevating, moving up and in, right, during this hitting motion. Great so drill. when you do this, Mac, you do it one more time? Yeah. At what, so if you, you make your normal backswing, and then you have that touch the curb at like maybe right foot-ish? Yeah, it's probably gonna, you know, the, the big piece is you get yourself a little closer to the curb than you probably would be to a ball. Okay. Like, so, you know, my butt end of the club is where a ball would be. So it's maybe like three inches? Yeah, okay. three or four inches, a little offset. We make our normal swing, I come in, and let's see, yeah. So right right so around that, that trail toe right in there, it, yep. it really hits in there. And then from here, it's just applying as much force as you can really put into that curb, as long as that body keeps moving. Yes. And it takes us up and in. Well, I'm interested to hop in. Let me try this, Matt. Yeah. And so normal setup position, grip end down, not club, just a couple um, inches out of the front. So I'm kind of making my backswing, not kind of, I am, making my backswing from here on the way back, just neutral. I'm still feeling like I have that little band in on the way back here. As I begin working down, I get the butt of the club to the curb, kind of back edge of my right foot, feeling the um, butt of the club against the curb, kind of all the way through impact as my body's turning, and then it's gonna naturally come off on the way through, right? That's right, yeah. And so when I'm doing this, and I set up up here, what I'm feeling, obviously you're gonna feel some things just to get this to the curb, and then the force against this, but especially in the follow through, I'm not going down the curb forever. That's right. Right? So it's, it's, it comes off and up to the left as I work my body pieces that's through. That's right, and it, go back in there again. Yeah. And so like if you see the normal person kind of do this, yeah. they generally tend to dump it out in here like that, and now the curb, it's like, well, it doesn't really make much sense to hit it. So okay. You know, you're learning stuff as you go through this. So now how do I arrange my body to get to it? That's and then, good yeah, too. Yeah. So even from, from the down the line perspective, even getting this onto the curb is gonna be a little bit different, maybe in terms mm -hmm. of shape of swing. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna have to shape body different, we're gonna have shape swing different. Yeah, so it really yeah. gets it, the club head working kind of from the inside part of the arc, onto the arc, and then back on the inside, back on the way around. That's it. Love it, perfect. All right, Matt, so obviously we did the two drills there. Love both of them for feels in swing, but we both know a lot of what can go wrong or good happens before you even move, right? That's right. And so the setup position for the wedge is extremely important. We're hitting a little 50 yard um, wedge shot out here. What would be some of the main bullet points to look for with a 50 yard wedge shot? All right, so starting from the ground up, I narrow the stance from full swing, right? Yeah. So. Uh, we're gonna go hip width generally at maximum. So outsides of the feet to the width of the hips. Yep, love that. Yeah, and then we, we flare the lead foot. So we just take the, leave the heel right in place, take the toe and move it, you know, no more than five to 10 degrees toward the target. Okay, so, yep. so if, if, and this is for my own clarity, if this is like a 12 o'clock, maybe like 11-ish? Yeah. -ish, something a little, yep, okay. There you go. Got it, okay. Uh, and j just get, we just really wanna incentivize that lower body to move yep. so our upper body can. And then, so feet, so this would be like my normal setup. That's too wide. This would be kind of more neutral-ish, right? That's right. Front foot flirt. And then ball position, Matt, what do we? I'd keep it as neutral as possible. Let's just, let's just say middle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't want to, especially hitting anything over 50 yards, we don't want that thing to creep back behind center. So I, I don't need to go back by my right toe. Kind of, so I'm going pretty neutral with this. And then with a neutral ball position and my feet here, I'm assuming shaft, pretty neutral to just slightly forward? Slightly forward. Yeah. I, I like to tell people just, just right at the left edge of a belt buckle. Ooh, I you like know, it's, that it's a pretty good visual. This to here. Yep. Got it, okay. Yep. So just yep. a very little slight forward mark with that. And then um, upper body? 
Upper body, upper body is where it's going to get a little different in terms of what we normally do in full swing. Our upper body has that little bit of a levelness to it, to where our shoulders don't really have this this tilt that we have in Not full this swing. Way. Yeah, we're trying to take some of the power out. So, so if I was going longer club, even like a driver, I would be like here, left shoulder much higher. That's right. And then when we're going closer to it, almost like level. That's right. So now our vertebrae are a little bit more in line if you can kind of take that visual into it and right on top of one another. And so I'm going to hit one or two with this. I think one important note, um, obviously if someone is normally hits with this, there's going to be some feels that are going to come into play. Your feet are going to feel unbelievably close compared to normal if you're not used to doing that. Uh, the foot flare shouldn't be that dramatic. Ball position and shaft angle shouldn't be that dramatic. The shoulder angle can be dramatic. If someone's used to, uh, let's say, having this when they're doing the wedges and you get level, it's going to feel oh. like your lead shoulder is probably lower yeah. than you're right down yeah. to the ground. Totally. Your left arm is going to feel really different. Yeah. It's not going to have that rigidity to it. It's going to have more of a softness to it. Oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that, that, because the elbow's different, you know, our, our hands are offset on the grip. So now that the shoulders are kind of level, that's Some, a really solid yeah. little point there. Something has to give, right? Yeah, so if I yeah. get my left shoulder, not to go off on a tangent, but if my left shoulder goes lower, my arm, my lead arm is gonna be looser, more free compared to, that's yeah. very good, yeah. I like that's, that a and lot. That's a great one, that generally helps folks out a lot. The lead arm a little looser. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and hit one or two here. Feet are close, front foot flared to roughly 11, balls neutral. And again, you don't necessarily have to think about all this, you already have those pieces, check mark the box. If not, and you're struggling with contact, then we need to look here. So yeah, set it and forget it. Set it and forget right. it. Yep. Left shoulder a little lower, left arm a little bit more neutral. And there's my 50-ish um, yard shot. And we're gonna talk in a little bit, in a second or two, about the prior prioritization of some of these pieces and what's important um, to get good at this once we get beyond this uh, contact piece, some other piece involved with it. But just stock stuff here. Feet close, front foot flared, ball neutral, left shoulder lower, Left arm a little bit more loose, 50 yard shot. Yeah, and I like those setup pieces um, a lot to keep things neutral. So two simple drills to work through a couple um, setup pieces, but you actually did a study on uh, 250 golfers and found a couple things that I wanna chat about in a minute. So guys, let's take a listen to this. All right, Matt, so um, you did a, a study, right, recently of over 250 golfers on the wedges in particular, and I think found some cool things that'd be cool to share with the audience. Um, of those 250 golfers, what are some of the conclusions you came to or some of the things you saw? Yeah, so an interesting one that I didn't expect to find was, you know, equipment, equipment matters. Uh, yeah. And I mean, that's a fortunate or unfortunate thing. <laughs> yeah. <I> new wedges, <laughs> right? right? Uh, but, you know, new, grooves and not necessarily the grooves it's the area in between the grooves right so that's where the friction is happening uh, so wedges matter ball matters if you're really trying to control spin it's all about the premium ball and the covers so if, if we're not going to produce spin and launch on a range with a range ball here we're going to launch it through a different window because it's spinning differently right yeah. and so that stuff's all well, real important to go into. So if someone were to come in and they said, hey, I want to spin my wedges more, probably the first area to look at based on the data you collected is how new or old are your wedges and what type of golf ball do you play? Absolutely. That'd be yeah. number one. That's, you gotta, we gotta start there. Yeah. yeah, so so if, like I get messages all the time, how do I spin the ball more? And then they have a wedge like me, right, that's 17 years old, hasn't been cleaned, and then they have random golf balls, that would be the, the first starting point. And then beyond that, right, new, so new wedges, new premium balls, um, what would be kind of the second factor? What would you look at next? Next factor is contact. Okay. Got yeah, it. and so just, just sheer contact of, hey, can I take the club and, and hit the golf ball with it? Do I hit it fat? Do I hit it thin? Uh, so just putting club to ball, huge. Yeah. Yeah. So it's simple things, and that's like anything where it's, you get all the magic of the spin, you get all the magic of everything else based on the simple things. Hit the ball solid, sounds like contact newer wedges, newer golf balls. Um, and then obviously in today's video, we talked about a couple drills, couple setup pieces. I think it's a beautiful foundation uh, to start with. If you wanna master the 50 yard wedge shot, it's a great place to start with those three things. We're gonna talk a little bit more about specifics of wedges in our next video, which we'll get into, but I think that's good for now. Mr. Matt, thanks for having us out here, man. Hey, thanks, Appreciate right. it. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Go check out the two videos that are on the screen here. More info to take your wedge game to the next level. If you liked this video and like what Matt had to say, go ahead and check out matthendersongolf.com. We'll put it in the description down below. If you're in the Las Vegas area and want some coaching, would urge you guys to come out. If you did like the video, do us a favor, click that like button, it really helps us out. Click the notification bell, please subscribe, thank you.